imagine in 1814 a whole flotilla of canoes coming in. The water came all the way in here. It wasn't all blocked up like it is now. His mother was coming in to give birth to him. The kahunas were in place. The midwives were in place. He was born. He was still born. He was blue. Governor Kuikini wanted this baby, but he didn't want this blue baby. So the kahuna took it. He prayed over it. He chanted over it. And the baby started to stir. And the baby came to life. He was taken into Kaopa Spring over there. There's a big dish-shaped rock. And that's where they put this baby and bathed him and baptized him. This actually was his birthing stone here. Then the kahuna took this baby. <clears throat> what is now known to you folks is Kohanaiki or Ooma. And he was raised out there with the nursemaid till he was about nine years old. This king was like any ordinary boy. He had his brass toys, he had his brass cannon. He always wore a baseball hat so he wouldn't be recognized out in the field. He was a very fast runner, very competitive. At the tender age of 10, he became the king of Hawaii. His mentor was Ka'ahumanu. Kaui Keoli achieved more in his tenure, and he served longer than any of our other monarchs. By 1840, we had our state motto. We had Lahaina Luna School on Maui, which is still in operation. He had imported the vaqueros to teach the Hawaiians how to be cowboys, which was a wonderful union. It was a marriage made in heaven on both sides. 1841, Punahou School was founded. By 1848, when he created the great Maheli, all of our social services were in place. Welfare, health, education, social security. This man had great foresight, and he wanted to take care of his people. He was warned early on from his advisors, don't sell your land, lease it to the people, for if you do, you will see them going all around the world like flies. Well, as you all know, that's exactly what happened. With this great Maheli, he divided the lands into sections that he thought his people could survive on, from the ocean to the mountain, all different climates. Now, what do you think was going on in the continental United States in 1848. The gold rush, the railroad was being laid. They were still shooting cowboys and Indians. And we were settled. We had everything in place. By now we had mercantile, we had banks, we had medical facilities. We had the private school, people sending their kids from the West Coast to Honolulu to go to Punahou. And in 1853, when the Chinese came in and started the laundry, not only did we get the kids, we got the dirty clothes too. <laughs> now he must be remembered as one of the, the most forward-moving, with a lot of foresight, monarchs that we ever had. And to him we give thanks, and thank all of you for coming. <laughs>